Welcome to the 2017 uh, sump review of my tank. Um, last year I've made a similar video and uh, it was proven to be quite popular and uh, people were asking for more. So here's the new edition. Uh, I will be showing you my, uh, my sump and my filtration chamber of my Red Sea Reefer 525. I have had it for a little over a year now, it's been running since January 2016 and well here's the review I'm starting off with on the right side of the tank um, in the right cabinet as you can see that there's a, a cooler there which takes up most of the, the space in the right cabinet it's a, it's a Taiko TK500 which is uh, both cooling and heating the tank which is very nice, as you can see the current temperature is 25.6 degrees, which is okay. Um, as, soon as, as soon as it drops below 25.5 it will start heating and as soon as it reaches 26 it will start cooling the tank to 25, so 25 is the offset. As you can see it's also powered by a DJ switch. Uh, most of you are hopefully familiar with this concept. It's actually a box which has 10 separate fuses uh, which allows for 10 uh, sockets to fit in which you can control individually using a switch I think that's why it's called the DJ switch is also being used by musicians to control various equipment but it also comes in pretty handy in the aquarium business well next to that you can see the there are three jerry cans you can only see two because the third one is behind it and um, that's because I'm running on Balling Classic it's one of the methods to maintain your water parameters I'll uh, actually make a separate video about that because it's uh, quite interesting. My uh, reef has been running on Balling Classic for about, I think, two and a half years now. Because also my previous tank, which was in our previous house, was also running on the same method. So, then, when we move on to the actual sump area, because that's what this video is about, you can see that there's well, most of the, the normal equipment that you would expect in the sump. There's the uh, auto top-off system, which is integrated, which has been uh, added by Red Sea itself. You can see it half full. I have to fill it every two days, two and a half days, to uh, make sure it doesn't run out of water. And what it does is it uh, uh, directs water through a small hose to the most left area of the uh, sump where the, uh, where the return pumps are. Speaking of the return pumps, there are actually two in my tank. So I'll try to show you a little top view here where you can see that there's two return pumps. They're both uh, the Jacob brand because, well, to be honest, they're not that loud, not that expensive. So overall, it's a, it's a good choice when you're looking for return pumps. The, um, the reason I have two return pumps is that there's one that's correct, connected with the yellow hose that's connected directly to the tank um, that's uh, 8000 liters which is running at 80% capacity and that there's another one which controls all the internal equipment because I noticed that um, when powering all of these other equipments with separate pumps you get a whole sum full of pumps which make noise and which use power and everything so that's why I decided to create a separate channel with one return pump for all these uh, all these equipments. And more specifically, it's powering. Uh, when you can see it's the the silicone hose, it's uh, going into a system which I glued together myself. First of all, it powers the bio pellet reactor. It's a vertex, which I'll cover in a minute. Then it continues upward, and it also has. Uh, a connection to the UVC unit which I will also cover later and the last one you can see it going upwards with the last connection it's going actually to the cooler which also obviously requires some water to run through it to cool it okay next up uh, let's start with the bio pellet reactor it's uh, as I mentioned before a vertex uh, bio pellet reactor you can use different media inside but since my nitrates are on the high side, around 20, I decided I would run a bio pellet reactor just to keep it under control.
The second is a UVC unit. It uh, cleans the water of bacteria. Uh, the main upside is, is that it uh, prevents uh, white spots on your fish. So it actually keep, it's, it's there to keep the fish healthy. It's also there to keep the water clear. Um, one of the downsides that you can think of is that uh, it not only kills bad bacteria like uh, young uh, white white uh, white dot bacteria, but also uh, good bacteria. So it's it's a choice really to uh, to use a UVC unit. I think it's better for overall health of fish and water clarity, but uh, it can kill good bacteria. So that's. Uh, that's one of the downsides of using it, but I've chosen to use it. I'm using it 24-7. There are also people that go halfway, use it uh, only 12 hours a day. But yeah, it's a choice and it's working out for me, so that's, uh, that's why I'm doing it. Then next there's the skimmer. Obviously you would have already noticed it, it's quite large. It's a Vertex also, it's a Vertex Alpha 200. It's a slightly older type, which is still using a Red Dragon uh, pump, which is uh, running nice and quietly. It has a large capacity, it draws in air, and it creates nice bubbles. It's, it's skimming pretty wet, also because um, the nitrates in my tank are rather high, so it's a choice really, really to, uh, yeah, to... Uh, to have a lot of bubbles coming from it. <laughs> then there's one more, of, there's two types of filtration that I haven't mentioned yet. The first one is, uh, the most obvious one, it's a piece of live rock. Um, it's really a choice to keep some live rock in your sump, it's not uh, something you have to do. Um, but since my, um, my rockscape is pretty minimalistic, there's not that much rock, although it might seem there's a lot of rock, it's it's not that much, I think about 40 kilos, so that's why I added some uh, some to the to the sum. The second one of mechanical filtration is actually also a pretty simple one, it's the the filter socks that come with the, with the reefer itself. I have chosen to um, to not use the, the, the mesh that's coming with it, but I've chosen to buy two uh, filtration chambers which I bought from a UK website, Little Fishies. I'll link to it. It's actually two acrylic containers with holes in the bottom and well as you can see the water's flowing through it so it catches all the dirt that's coming into the tank. So let's put that back. Then there's the second one which is the same kind of filtration thing but there's row of us inside again to keep the phosphates under control. Well there you have it really, that's most of my technique that I'm using in my tank. It's um, It's been quite a journey, I've experienced some different kind of things, I've even had some Cheeto in the tank, you can still see there's the, the light, the, the white light, which has uh, uh, pink and blue LEDs inside to to keep the, the the Cheeto healthy, but it didn't quite work out for me. Might be uh, uh, in conjunction with the UVC unit that it's not working properly. But yeah, I've chosen not to use it anymore. So that really makes a, a pretty basic setup for my reefer. And yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you'd like to see anything else or like to have some more explanation about what certain things are doing or how it works, please let me know. And I can of course make a feature video about that as well. So for now, thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye.